my name is Jen Gomerman and I've been a um, faculty member in the Department of Immunology since 2003. I actually trained at University of Toronto. I did my undergraduate degree here uh, followed by my graduate degree. And it was actually during my undergraduate degree uh, that I became really interested in immunology. I took the third year immunology course, which I think still exists now. And um, I was just really turned on to the subject. And as a consequence, I did research, followed by graduate studies and postdoctoral work at Harvard. Um, after my postdoc, I did a brief period at industry, three years at Biogen in Cambridge, Massachusetts and then had the opportunity to come back to Toronto to be a professor. So I took that and uh, have been enjoying running my lab here in the department. So it's true that autoimmune disease is on the rise. It's been increasing by about a factor of three to five fold in the last 50 years. And that rise is too fast to be explained by genetics. I think uh, most scientists would agree that there's something about our environment that has changed that is promoting um, more autoimmune disease. We're seeing this in terms of multiple sclerosis as well as IBD and asthma, etc. Um, so we don't know what those environmental factors are. It's a lot easier to study genetics than it is to study environmental factors because um, it's hard to control human experiments. Um, but one thing that we've been studying, um, and I lead a team along with Dr. Ken Kreutzer to ask this question, is um, when someone immigrates to Canada, does their risk of getting autoimmune disease change? And in fact, what we found is that um, if you immigrate from a place like India, you're relatively protected from getting an autoimmune disease such as IBD or asthma. But if you are uh, originally, if your parents are from India, but you are born in Ontario, your risk of getting those disease becomes the same as the general population. So that's an increase um, in disease incidence from one generation to the next. So that's probably not genetics, it's probably the environment. So that's why uh, we're studying this question. In fact, we're studying this question among South Asians um, in Ontario. So, um, the lesson that you learn from reading The Hitchhiker's Guide to the Universe is the one motto of don't panic. I think that uh, we spend a lot of time worrying about our futures and not enjoying the present. So I think it's really important to do something you're passionate about. If you're passionate about science, do it. And use laser-like focus to make sure that you're um, going towards that goal. Uh, hi, my name is uh, Eric Tull, and I'm actually co-supervised with um, uh, Jen Gummerman and Arthur Mortha. And the projects I'm delving in, I actually have two. So the one uniting factor with these two projects is essentially the study of the, the microbiome and how it impacts arms of uh, homeostasis and disease. So on one side of things, I'm trying to understand how perturbations um, in the upper airway tract microbiome um, affects the disease outcome for IJ nephropathy patients. And in the other hand, I'm trying to understand in a mouse model how a novel protozoan, uh, the Trichomonas family, um, how these guys seem to modulate uh, the gut and specifically the IgA response there, and as well as uh, affecting the microbial dysbiosis. Grad studies, especially with research, it really lets you explore unknown caveats of uh, not only academia, but medical research and so on. And you're basically uh, putting your feet into something that's unknown. And through this, it's very intriguing and very interesting to be able to start to explore and dissect something that no one has ever done before or someone has done, but you're now optimizing, you're making improvements into it. And I find that the, the fact that you're contributing something new and novel, it's, it's very exciting actually. I'm Dennis, and I am a fourth year graduate student in Jennifer Gomerman's laboratory. So because my project is pretty um, animal intensive, I use lots of mice, I do lots of my work in the animal facility as opposed to doing certain things uh, in the regular lab, so I spend a lot of time checking mice, uh, immunizing mice to give them the model of multiple sclerosis, 
um, getting them sick, tracking them, weighing them, and that's a big chunk of what I do. So there are a couple things that you should consider when you're picking a lab to do your graduate studies in. One is the project, another is the PI, and finally the lab environment that you're in because the, these are the people that you're going to spend a lot of time with for the next couple years. For everyone, it's going to be a little different. I think the most important relationship is the one that you have with the PI. If you know that you're going to slack off and you need someone to kind of keep you in check, then you should get a PI like that and not someone who's super laid back. Um, so it really depends on you, but in order for you to be successful, you have to be comfortable with where you are while you're still getting challenged to do the best you can.